Cleveland and I'm with uh, Boundary Stone and uh, I'm here today to uh, talk with you a little bit about real economics um, and uh, also about human nature I think. Um, you know we live in a world that seems so confusing sometimes and, and you wonder with all the strife uh, between people can't we all just get along? And, and certainly I think all of us want to live in a world where we uh, reside uh, by our neighbors with uh, peace and contentment that um, that there wasn't all this strife, that there wasn't all the sort of uh, infighting and that sort of thing, name calling and um, and yet you know the thing is um, what is human nature really like? Well, and, and why do we have a lot of the infighting that we do? Well, uh, economists say, well, you know, people are self-interested. And I think when we hear that word, we're led to believe uh, immediately that that means that we're all selfish. Well, it could be. I mean, we do. I, for one, have been selfish on many occasions. And understand that what that's like. And I think uh, if you uh, look at your own life, you would say that on occasion that you likewise have acted selfishly. Uh, but self-interested behavior is not in and of itself a bad thing. After all, we have to. Uh, we could scarcely live without considering ourselves. I mean, if you're going to go cross a busy street, you're going to look both ways. Uh, you're not going to just race out and cross the street because you could get run over. And that's self-interest. Likewise, uh, even raising a family, uh, you're going to consider the needs of your family. And, uh, and that's going to be self-interested. Well, where did this idea that uh, self-interested behavior was necessarily selfish come from? I think it really began in the, uh, in the 19th century. 19th century was a move towards evolutionary thought. Uh, we had Charles Darwin, and uh, then we also had Herbert Spencer, who was a uh, uh, social Darwinian. And the idea behind evolutionary thought, of course, is that things are changing, and they continue to change, and that everything is changing. Well, in time, social reformers uh, grabbed hold of this idea and began to propose uh, vi utopian visions of how you could uh, change human nature and make the collective more important than the individual. And what we had to do is uh, change the individual's fundamental nature and fit him into the, uh, into the collectivist whole. Uh, and, you know, if we look around the world, all efforts to do so, uh, all forms of socialism that aim to fit every individual into the collectivist whole, instead of promoting peace and tranquility, ended up doing exactly the opposite. It promoted hatred and discord in society. You know, uh, the truth is that we, we do live in a world that has fallen. Sometimes we do behave very badly. And, uh, and so there is a need for us to come to think soberly about ourselves and put self-interest in its proper place. But the effort to change human nature, uh, that's a faulty vision. And uh, it can't be done. And it really denies the most obvious principles of all economics. So the human action that we all engage our world and act in ways uh, that we see as being beneficial is important. And we all are not going to agree as to what's most important for each of us individually to pursue. Some people like to climb Mount Everest. I would rather watch the ascent on TV. It's not something I want to do. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful to you. We, we're trying to provide resources for you to help you navigate your way through what's well, really a confusing world at times and to understand it and to engage with it. Once again, Dr. Paul Cleveland with Boundary Stone. Check out our website. I'll see you next time.